This month, SpaceX successfully ignited all six engines on the latest Starship prototype, taking a significant leap ensuring the upper stage will be ready for the rocket's first orbital launch attempt. It's thought a happy ending happened to Ship 24, but a few days later, it continued to undergo strange modifications that seem to imply the upper stage is not living up to SpaceX expectation, which seems to suggest there'll be no deployment of any satellites on this vehicle, even as a test. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech Channel. In March, we were so excited to see SpaceX outfit the Ship 24 prototype with a unique Starlink satellite dispenser. But on September 21st, photographer Starship Gazer took some awesome images of a new cover lifted into place on top of the S24 Starlink V2 Pez door. Interestingly, on the same day, a new full-size Starlink V2 satellite deployment machine, or Pez, was installed in Ship 27's payload bay. Many questions are now raised about the Ship 24 fate. And, as expected, on September 22nd, Starship's 24 Starlink V2 satellite PEZ dispenser is permanently closed for business. The new cover is very thoroughly tack welded all the way around the edges, so it sounds like S24 won't be deploying any payloads. Anyway, for a ship that'll be making the first attempt to orbit, I think SpaceX really is just focusing on getting it to work first before putting it to good use. Fair enough. In another possible rare case, maybe SpaceX found some design flaw in the PEZ dispenser, and instead of trying to remove the whole mechanism and mess up the structural integrity of S24, they just chose to seal the door. What do you think? Well, now it's unclear if additional testing is required for Ship 24. This week, SpaceX has no scheduled road closures. What about Starlink V2? Starlink V2 will probably be deployed for the first time on Falcon 9. Last month, SpaceX said it revised plans for the next generation Starlink Gen 2 constellation to allow the upgraded satellites to launch on its workhorse Falcon 9 rocket in addition to Starship, a new and unproven vehicle. According to SpaceX, despite the seemingly major form factor changes required to make Gen 2 fit, Starship and Falcon 9 optimized satellites will still be technically identical. The implication is that the satellites launched on Falcon 9 will still offer the same performance as those launched on Starship, albeit in a different form factor. Nonetheless, the only thing SpaceX guarantees in the document is that the Falcon 9 launched Gen 2 satellites won't be more powerful than those launched on Starship, presumably preserving the applicability and existing analysis on the current Starlink Gen 2 application. It's thus possible that Falcon 9 optimized Starlink Gen 2 satellites would have to sacrifice some of their performance relative to the unconstrained Starship optimized variant. With a usable diameter of about 4.6 meters or a little under 15 feet, Falcon 9's payload fairing is about 50% narrower than the payload bay present on early Starship prototypes. Without a major redesign, Starship Gen 2 satellites optimized for Falcon 9 will likely need to sit vertically inside the fairing. The standard version, which stands 6.7 meters or a little under 22 feet tall, right before its conical tip begins curving inward. Weighing in at about 1.25 tons or 2,750 pounds and measuring 7 meters or around 23 feet long, Starlink's Gen 2 design may only need a few moderate tweaks to fit on Falcon 9, but they'll have to be stacked vertically instead of horizontally. Falcon 9's established performance of roughly 16.5 tons, payload adapter included to LEO, means the rocket would be limited to around 12 or 13 Gen 2 satellites per launch, however, making the task somewhat easier. If SpaceX can squeeze that many Starlink Gen 2 satellites inside of Falcon 9's existing reusable fairing, it could still boost the efficiency or total bandwidth per launch of each Starlink mission by around 50% relative to the same rocket carrying 50 to 60 Starlink V1.5 satellites. Set to be the largest and most powerful rocket ever flown when it eventually debuts, SpaceX's two-stage Starship launch vehicle is also intended to be fully reusable, theoretically slashing the cost of launching payloads into and beyond Earth orbit. Most importantly, SpaceX says that even in its fully reusable configuration, Starship should be capable of launching up to 150 tons, 330,000 pounds, to low Earth orbit, or LEO, nearly a magnitude more than Falcon 9. However, once said to be on track to debut as early as mid-2021 or early 2022, it's no longer clear if Starship will be ready for regular Starlink launches anytime soon. 
It's no surprise then that SpaceX appears to be doing everything it can to begin launching Starlink Gen 2 as quickly as possible, whether or not Starship is ready to help. Well, this is really urgent because right now SpaceX has a major problem with the Starlink internet connection. When SpaceX's Starlink internet service first launched as beta in 2020, many of the headlines were about the blazingly fast speed. The problem, according to a new report from internet speed testing site Ookla, is that the more people get on the service, the slower it seems to get. This report, spotted by PC Gamer, found that Starlink users in the United States and Canada have seen a steep decline in their download speeds that can likely be attributed to congestion for more and more people using the service. Starlink speeds decreased in every country we surveyed over the past year as more users sign up for service, reads the Ookla report, which draws on data from speedtest.net. Median download speeds dropped between 5 and 54 percent from Q2 of 2021 to Q2 of 2022 in the U.S., Canada, the U.K., France, Germany, and New Zealand. From Q1 to Q2 in 2022 in the U.S., Starlink's median download rate dropped from more than 90 megabits per second to about 62.5 megabits per second, PC Gamer pointed out. During the same period in Canada, Starlink's download speed dropped a similar amount, going from 97.4 to 75.73. Now that's not absolutely terrible, but it does bring some of the hype around the service down, a consumer-oriented package meant to bankroll more ambitious ventures by the Elon Musk-led space company like Colonizing Mars, it'll bring it crashing back to Earth. Interestingly, Starlink in Puerto Rico and Mexico ended up being faster in the same service window as in the U.S. and Canada, and the fixed broadband internet in the latter two countries were faster than satellite internet. As PC Gamer has noted, the drops in Starlink download speeds come as more and more people are using the Musk-fronted satellite internet company, and as people take to social media to complain about the noticeable slowdown of their Wi-Fi. I've been on since beta testing, one user on the Starlink subreddit wrote. It worked amazing at the beginning, but they've oversold the cells and we have peak hours for all the usable internet hours. I no longer recommend Starlink to anyone, the user concluded. In another post, a user noted their Starlink download speed dropped to just 5 megabits per second, much lower than the 60-ish megabit per second threshold at which one can adequately stream and game. Starlink V2 is the best solution to solve it, so SpaceX needs to launch as soon as possible. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, subscribe, press the like button, and share your ideas in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, thank you so much, and we hope to see you next time.